Hello everyone and welcome back to Long's Toys. Today I have a Transformers Robots in Disguise review for you. This is Warrior Class Quillfire. I also had some trouble finding this guy just like Thunderhoof so I got this off of HasbroToyShop.com. I still have never seen him in a store yet. Uh, but he looks pretty cool. He's primarily kind of a tannish color. A little bit of brown, a little bit of black. Looks pretty cool. Uh, taking a look at the packaging here. You got vehicle mode, robot mode, transformation instructions over here. Otherwise, not really too much to the packaging. So we'll go ahead, we'll bust this guy out, and we will take a closer look. So taking a look at Quillfire straight out of the box, he is a little mistransformed initially. You're going to want to lift this up. And then you can kind of put the head back a little bit, and then it'll kind of stay in place, and you can open his mouth. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really lock into place. It just uses this to kind of keep it in place. So it is a little rickety. I kind of wish it snapped into place, but it doesn't really. But I do appreciate that you can open and close the mouth. I like that a lot. Coming around to the back, this uh, kind of cluster of quills, you're going to rotate up. And... It'll peg into place, and then you're going to kind of lift this, the hood, it's going to be the hood of the car, but that's going to kind of fold up and kind of cover his butt. So once you have that done, he is ready to go. I like the look of him for the most part. He's mostly tan and brown, which are kind of, you know, somewhat dull colors, but he's got a little bit of red and yellow and some uh, gray, a little silver here on the head. I really like the way the head's done. The red eye looks great, the silver eyebrow. And I really do appreciate that the mouth can open and close. I think that's pretty cool. He comes with two accessories. This little brown gun. And I'm assuming this is just meant to be like one of his quills he can throw at someone. So you can just go ahead and put those in his hand. There you go. So either will fit in either hand. And it looks pretty good. I like how it looks like the fingers on the trigger. It's a nice little touch. Then you can see the Decepticon symbol here on the chest. Now, unfortunately, his articulation is... It's not bad, but it's just the shoulders are a little weird. I'm just going to take the accessories out for right now. Um, he's kind of got, like, you can see this gray hinge. And there's a ball joint here where the gray top of the gray piece meets the shoulder. And then there's, like, a very minimal little up and down hinge right there. It's not bad. It's just... I wish there was a little bit more movement. It feels a little restricted there. But then you've got this movement here where the gray piece here meets the tan. Then you've got a ratchet, not really a ratchet, but a swivel here at the elbow. Now, like every Rid figure so far, his hands do fold into the forearms when transforming him. So because of that, there's not really any wrist trans or yeah, wrist articulation. That's the word I'm looking for. Again, the head doesn't really lock into place, uh, but you can move the jaw. You can move the head a little bit. Um, you have a ball joint in the hip right here. There is a waist swivel, which is part of the transformation. You have some bending at the knee. Uh, is there a thigh swivel? Yes, there is a thigh swivel as well, so that's nice. And then you have a little bit of articulation in the ankle, but again, it's mostly for transformation. So overall, he's not bad. He's definitely kind of short and squat and bulky. Uh, but I like him. I think it's a neat design. I love the quill sticking out of the back. And I love the head. So for those two reasons alone, I really like him. Now you can see here there's a peg if you want to store the weapons in the back. You can certainly do that. If you want to give him like a tail, you could do that. Um, but yeah, I think he's pretty neat. But we'll go ahead, we'll move on, take a look at the transformation. So, of course, as I already mentioned, the hands are going to fold into the forearm like every other Rid figure so far. Uh, you're going to go ahead and lift this piece up, and then you're going to just completely flip the head right into there and then close it down. No big deal. Uh, you're going to come to the back here and just kind of accordion this out and kind of leave that alone. And then you're going to see there's some silver or light gray right here. That piece is going to lift up and kind of pop out like that. And then you're going to kind of put it up here. Now, the funny thing is it's not really going to be, like, level. Like, this piece, the waist part will kind of be at an angle. That's not going to flip all the way up. It's going to go, you know, kind of most of the way up. 
but you're going to need to leave some of it. Now, what you can do at this point, um, I like to bring this around. The instructions show it happening later, but I kind of like to do it now. You can see here, let me get a little bit closer. There's a tab, and then there's kind of a slot for it right there. So those are just going to tab in, and you can do that on both sides. So that kind of shores that up. You're going to fold this up, and you're going to see there's a little nub right there and there. And there's these tiny little holes, one on that side, and one right there on that side. So that's going to come down and just kind of rest in those little nubs. And it's nice because it does kind of lock that in place. At this point, you can see there's a little notch there and a tab there. So you can go ahead and shore this all up. Actually, I'm wrong. Before you do that, you're going to want to spin the waist uh, 180 degrees. So make sure you do that before you put everything else into place. You can also flip these feet around. They flip around, I want to say, like 270 degrees. A little bit more than 180. Uh, then you can just come around, pop these in. Pop the notches in, get the panels all lined up, and that really shores up the front of the vehicle mode. And then you can sandwich these two legs together, and they will, there's a little notch for them to clip together. And then you just kind of bring these up just until they kind of fit flush with everything else. And again, there's a tab here, and there is a little notch here and here. So you're going to want to put those in there. And then the last bit, you can see there's two little tabs and two little notch holes right there. And that just kind of shores everything up and, you know, make sure everything's together. And then you are left with this tiny little kind of a Humvee type vehicle. Uh, weapon storage. There is somewhere you can put the gun underneath. So that can be stored right there. I have not found anywhere to put this. It almost kind of looks like you can jam them in these little spots right there. So it looks like he has a quill sticking out and you can clothesline somebody. But they're very tight and they kind of stay but then pop right out. I don't want to break anything so I'm just going to leave it out for now. But overall I do like the look of this. I think it's kind of funny if you really wanted to. You could open up the hood of the car, make it look like someone's working on there. Or you could pop the head out and have him run around like this. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Go Busters, if anybody's seen that, probably have. Uh, the cheetah car had the kind of cheetah head sticking out the front, which I always thought was funny. So you could kind of recreate that here. But yeah, overall I think it's a nice little Humvee type vehicle. Works pretty well. I would have loved maybe a Decepticon symbol on the hood or something. It's a little plain, just that it's tan and gray. Or, I'm sorry, tan and brown. Has a little bit of gray. But it does a pretty good job of hiding the robot mode underneath. I do appreciate that. So yeah, just a nice Decepticon symbol in purple on the hood is the only thing I would wish. Or it could be on the uh, roof of the car. Either one. I would have liked it on the hood, though. But yeah, overall, pretty nice little vehicle mode. Personally, I really like Quillfire. He's definitely not one of the best figures from the Robots in Disguise line. But I just he strikes a chord with me. I like kind of his short, stocky nature. I love the face. I love the bundle of quills out the back. Um, and like I said, his color scheme makes sense for, you know, being a porcupine or whatever he's supposed to be. I think he's a porcupine. Um, so like I said, the color scheme makes sense for that. I would have just liked maybe a Decepticon symbol on the hood of the car for the vehicle mode. Just to make that pop a little bit. Since in vehicle mode it really is just tan and brown and those are kind of mundane colors. Uh, but overall, I think he's a fun little figure. I definitely recommend him as far as the Decepticons in this line are kind of being few and far between. You kind of really only had Steeljaw, Thunderhoof. Well, we did get a uh, blanket on his name now. Wow. Come back to it. <laughs> the motorcycle. Somebody help me. I know you guys know. And I'll say it before the end. I'm Fracture. Wow, there it is. Hello. Anyway. Um, there was a time when we were really only getting Autobots and Steel Jaw was kind of the only one we had. So I'm really happy to see more of these kind of animal vehicle hybrid Decepticons. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, and I definitely think uh, Quillfire is a lot of fun. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like and share this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Robots in Disguise Quillfire. 
and thanks so much for watching.